First Chronicles chapter 23. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. Now this is an important note here because there's an overlap. So when you say David wrote, reigned 40 years, and then you say Solomon ran 40 years, Solomon overlaps David. Now, does the times of 40 years for both, is it at this midpoint, or is David still a king kind of under Solomon, or Solomon's fully the king with his father? The overlap's important if you're going to date and time and year uh, the reigns of these kings. I mean, one thing, God does not really give us definite dates and years. We're not to be. You know, people time the, the rapture and the tribulation period. That's not to be so. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel, the rulers, the leaders, with the priests and the Levites. Now remember, all Levites are not priests. But all priests are Levites. That's the rule. Now, the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and upward. That's the age that Jesus began his ministry. Uh, they're numbered by their poles. So you say a pole count, counting the heads, man by man, no females, was 30 and 8,000 men, over 30 years old, of which 20 and 4,000 were to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. The bread, the offerings, the trimming the candles, the incense, the whatever needed to be done. And 6,000 were officers and judges. Now notice who the officers and judges are. They are the Levites. The Levites were the ones, the children of Levi, that were under God. God never gave a possession of the inheritance of the land to the Levites. He says, I am your inheritance. So when a Levite would stand as judge in a court, I don't know if they would have a jury, but I would know that that priest, if he's right with God, would reach out to God and say, God, I, I don't know what the cause is. I don't know who is guilty and who's not guilty. It's just too hard for me. And when Moses had set up the legal system, he put off circuit courts and Moses was the high. And Moses would go to God and say, hey, I get, we got this difficult case here. And God would answer Moses. And it's quite relevant when you look at the United States and the Supreme Court that we have. Now, if you were to visit the Supreme Court building and go where the judges see, I have been told, I have not been there, but I've been told by reliable witnesses that when you look at the chief justice see and look straight up to the ceiling, there is Moses holding the Ten Commandments. But that chief justice is supposed to look to God. Yeah, right, sure. But in the nation of Israel, in the children of Israel, David set forth before the temple is built that there are to be judges, and those judges are to be the Levites and the priests. They're the ones supposed to be the closest to God. To seek God's advice. More than 4,000 were porters. Those were open up the doors. Those would allow people in. They would say, you can't come in. You can come in. This is as far as you can go. And that porters is spoken about in John chapter 10 as Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. And would be a type of the Holy Spirit opening up the door. 4,000 praise the Lord with instruments. So here's 4,000. You've got workers, officers, and judges you got porters and you got musicians for God and only for God. This is not going to be rock music. This is not going to be country music. This is not going to be bluegrass music. This is going to be music worshiping God, holiness, and probably would find in the book of Psalms. But not all completely finished by now yet. And it says, with instruments which I, David, made. David made instruments. David would pick instruments and make instruments that would glorify God and not the flesh. It's interesting. I made said David to praise their, their will. So any musical instrument, if you want, according to the Bible, is to praise and worship God and not the flesh. If your flesh is stomping its feet and you're waving back and forth, you got the wrong. 
But if your heart meditates on the Lord and anything that the Lord has done and is doing, you ought to listen to, like I do, you ought to listen to the hymns instrumental without the words. And when you study your Bible and your mind just goes off, and it may go far off from what the words of that hymn is, but you go into your own heart, you go into singing your own words, your own praises to God. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Those are the three sons of Levi. Of the Gershonites were Laden and Shimeo. The sons of Laden, a chief was Jehiel and Zethim and Joel three. The sons of Shimei, Shimei, Shemith, and Hazel, Haranin, three. These were the chief of the fathers of Laden. The sons of Shimei were Jehath, Zena, Jerus, Beriah. These four were the sons of Shimei. And Jehath was the chief, and Zahath the second. But Jehaz and Beriah had not many sons. Therefore they were in one reckoning according to their father's house. So Jehaz and Beriah had not many sons. To grow the family, they came together as one unit. The sons of Kohath. Now this is the family that would carry the Ark of the Covenant. They would handle all the most holy things in the holy thing. They would carry the table of showbread. They would carry the, 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 the candlestick. They would carry the golden altar of incense. They would carry the labor. They would carry the brazen altar. These were the ones, and they would be covered that they would not see it be bared on their shoulders. Amram, that's an interesting name, Izhar, Hebron, and Azil, four. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses. So Aaron and Moses were a Kohath, was, se was separated that he should sanctify the most holy things. That's kind of funny because Aaron but Moses was in charge of the building. Moses was in charge of setting the tabernacle. But the main straight was put upon Aaron. The entire priesthood starts off with Aaron. This is the guy who built the golden calves. That God got angry with. Isn't God a merciful and loving God? Aaron must have evidently got right. He never built another calf. He never had his own little worship service anymore. And God called him to be the priest. Just like Aaron got right. Isn't it great for a merciful, glorious, gracious God, even in the Old Testament? Was separated. Aaron was separated that he should sanctify. That means set apart. This is for God. That's for anything else. The most holy thing. The most holy things would be the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. That's the most holy. He and his sons forever to burn incense before the Lord. That would be in the most holy, that would be in the holy place. To minister unto him, God, and to bless his name, God's name, forever. That was the charge of those priests. To glorify and magnify God. Now, concerning Moses, the man of God. His sons were named of the tribe of Levi. Well, he was a Levite. And the sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. And the sons of Gershom, Shebuel, was the chief. The sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah, the chief. And Eliezer had none other sons. But the sons of Rehabiah were very many. So there's a makeup. When a man has little or no sons his name is not going to be carried forth no longer because whether those do doors get married or those doors don't get married it's the father's name if they get married they'll take their husband's name i know right now one man who had two daughters his name has died out and is going to die out as far as his family it stops with two daughters if the doors got i mean the doors carry the father's name but they got married now they got their husband's name. And if she does not get married, she's got her father's name, but she can't produce any children. 
unless you got the virgin birth of Mary. Mary given birth by the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the long lived that seed that has been cursed in Jeremiah. The importance of the virgin birth. Uh, verse 18 of the sons of Izar, Shalomath the chief, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamine the fourth, the sons of Hazel, Micah the first, and Jeshua the second. Those are the Je's. Je's is Jehovah. And the sons of Merari, Mahalai, and Mushai. The sons of Mahalai, Eliezer, and Kish. El, E L, that's Jehovah God. And Eliezer died and had no sons but daughters. And their brethren, the sons of Kish, took them. Now that's not the same Kish, the father of King Saul. The sons of Mushai, Malai, and Eder, and Jeremoth, three. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, what we just read, were the chief of the fathers as they were counted by number of names by their poles that did work of the service of the house of the Lord from the age of 20 years and upward. So the priests did not start work until they were 20 years old. The, the reckoning of the numbers began at 30. There's a 10 year difference. Why? 10 years of service, 10 years of experience. When a guy entered the priesthood at 20 years old, I mean, this is the first time. And it looks like 10 years before you can really be counted to know what you're doing. I assume. That's assuming. For David said, Now we counted the Levites, we counted the priests. Now this is the order. For David said, The Lord God of Israel has given rest unto his people. Once David takes, I mean, once Solomon takes the throne, there's no re there, there's rest, there's peace, no war. When David was on the throne, war unto his people, Israel, Jews, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. Now, dwell in Jerusalem forever, there's gaps in there. They go off to Babylon. Then they come back. They're disposed throughout the world in 70 AD. And they're not all in Jerusalem today. But they will go back. And then they'll be chased out by the Antichrist. Then they'll come back through Jesus Christ. And then they'll get the new earth forever, eternity. And also the Levites, they shall no more carry the tabernacle. That, that's, all, that's the service of the three families. Every family had its job. Kohath had the carrying of the utensils. There was one family, forget, they had the curtains and the, the linen. They had another family, they carried the boards and they carried this. And every one of those three families we had had a job. David saying, you know what? And I don't want to make light of the word of God or the thing. Is There'll be a day will be no more packing, no more moving. We're not going to put it up and, and move. We are going to establish a place where it will not move again. It's too bad that Israel and Judah sin, and that this will be moved into Babylon, brought back during Ezra and Nehemiah, and then it's gone now. It's moved to heaven. But it rests on his people, he said, unto the Levites, they shall no more carry the tabernacle. It's going to be a time that that's it. Be no more cloud and no more fire. This is the place where the Lord said, I will set my name among the tribes of Israel. Nor any vessel of it for the service thereof. So David is going to instruct Solomon. And Solomon is going to build a permanent place. Which doesn't happen. But that's the goal of David. David doesn't know what's going to happen in 1st Chronicles. 2nd Chronicles. Jeremiah. David has no idea. David's heart right now is. We're going to build that temple. We're going to certify that temple Solomon. And forever the Jews are going to be settled in this land Solomon. And Solomon blows it in his worshiping gods. But right now, David's like, this is it. Settled forever. And we, and David thought his might maybe the Messiah is going to come. What's this temple? Hey, I don't know. But sin doesn't happen. We know. Jeremiah. Ezekiel. But that's what David's heart intended. Never again to be moved. Moved to Babylon. 
For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from 20 years old and above. So this is not the numbering that caused the angel of the Lord to come smite with pestilence, that he purchased the land. This is not where God told David to number and the, and the devil made David number. This is David's coming to his final word, final time. He's going to die. He's turned it over to Solomon. And his last words are, number those Levites. Why? Because I have a specific purpose. This is not a sin. David numbered him for why? Because he had four offices. The work, officers and judges, the porters, and the music. I need a number of them. I need to know who they are so I can write down and establish, that's your job, that's your job, that's your job, you're the boss of that job, you're in charge of that, you're in charge of those people. I need the numbers. It's not saying I'm going to rely on man, it's an orderly. I need to know how many we have, I need a who to put in charge. For what? To praise God. In the last words of David, Levites were numbered from 20 years old and above. It's kind of funny because over here it said, verse 3, now the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and upward. Contradiction? Now, I think they were numbered from 30. And then uh, David, I think, is in 20 years old service. We've got to count them. i got to know the exact number. i got the number of experienced people. Now I need a number of all the actual workers. Because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord. That would be Levites. Not all Levites are priests. Levites help the priests. Yes, sir, what do you need? I need the ashes of that brazen altar empty. Yes, sir. What do you need? There was a special family, I forget what they're in Joshua, where the, the, the children of Israel made you know, the, the enemy, they made a plaque with them and all that. They would be hewers and drawers of water. Hey, we need more water for, over here. We need more wood for the altar. We need some more oil. We got to make the oil. I need the ingredients for the oil. I need some wheat for the showbread. Levites would help. Levites would set things in order. The priests would do the work in the actual tabernacle. So there's all kinds of work to be done. In the courts, and Solomon's going to build a lot of courts. In the chambers, Solomon is going to build a lot of chambers. Wait till we get to that. Wait till you get to Ezekiel. I mean, there are just chambers and, and three rows, and there's winding staircases, and all. it's like, wow. And in purifying of all holy things, that's blood. Purifying the blood, purifying by the water, cleaning. And the work of the service of the house of God. There's all kinds of work to be done. David, before he's dying, his last words are, we've got to make sure the house of God is perfect. Can't be slacking. So here we go, both of the showbread. Someone's got to do the showbread. Someone's got to bake it. Someone's got to take it down. Somebody's got to make sure it's six and six. Somebody's got to make sure there's frankincense put on it. So we've got to make sure it's done right. That's one off, the showbread. And for the fine flour for meat offering, got to make sure we have the flour. Cannot offer without the flour. Got to be the right flour. Got to be the perfect flour. Got to be in charge of the meat offerings. And for the unleavened cakes, got to make sure they're not leavened. Make sure they're baked right. Make sure they're supposed to be what they are. Got to set these things in order. You got to make sure you do it right for God. And for that, which is baking in the pan. There were things that were baking in the pan had to be done. Got to do it with the right oil, right instruments, right thing. And for that, which is fried. There were things that were fried. There were things that were baking. And for all manner of measurement, or measure and size. God said this amount, you make sure it's that amount. Not less, not more. So David is setting forth the, the offering. How to do the offering. What to do with the offering. What kind of offering. Make sure you do it right. Solomon's intended to hear this. And to stand every morning. There was a time of the morning sacrifice. The lamb and the wine and all that in the morning to thank and praise the Lord. So not only do you offer that lamb in the morning, but you better offer thanks to God. You better praise God when you're offering that lamb. That's your job. Give God the glory in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, give God the glory. Thank God for getting up. Thank God you're able to get up. Thank God for a new day. 
and likewise at even. There was a sacrifice at the even, a lamb at the evening. And then when you're ready to go to bed, thank God. Thank God for the day. Praise God for the day. Thank God for a night of sleep coming up. All day. I think David's the one that says, or Daniel, seven times a day. And to offer all, look at that, burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbath. So there are times of the Sabbath. You better do all in the new moons. That's the first day of the month. You better make sure when the new moon comes, the beginning of the new month, you better do what you're supposed to do. And on the set feasts, there are seven feasts. You better make sure you do on those feast days, those feast days are the correct days and the proper ways to do because each of those feast days were different. Better do it. Look at him. He's reminding them he's putting the law in a nutshell. And what he's doing is he's condensing what the law is and he's basing his condense on this is what needs to be done. It needs to be done correctly and do it correctly. Don't forget. According to the order, there's an orderly fashion commanded unto them, that would be the law to the Levites, continually before the Lord. Do it forever. Do it all the time. That they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, which is going to be a temple, and the charge of the holy place, that's the table, that's the candlestick, that's the altar of incense, that's where John the Baptist's father will be. At the time of Luke chapter 1, Luke, uh, John's father is doing what David said to do. He's in there offering the incense for prayer. And the charge of the sons of Aaron, those are the priests, their brethren, the Levites, and the priests, in the service of the house of the Lord. And we're going to get more into more priests. And we're going to run into Luke chapter 1 in a moment. Well, another night. 